There has been entirely too much tomfoolery, shenanigans, and just general lollygagging in the intros of my videos. And you know what? PK Smart on Reddit agrees with me. In their words, Good Lord! I tried to watch, but you spent so much time on one subscriber. Who cares but you? And you're right. In the last video, my intro was two and a half minutes for the prequel fiend, which is why I set this timer right here. And I promise you, we are not going to be going over that time limit. What I will do very quickly though, is just point out something interesting. And you may notice that to our left hand side, maybe you're right, not quite sure. Mandy has now joined us on our main set. That's right, I relegated, relegated, I relegated her to the far corner and that was not fair. She gets an equal voice. Sorry, what was that? Oh, magpie here, magpie, yeah? Oh, you're feeling left out as well. Oh, jeez, I am so sorry. My apologies. I listen. I get it. They have physical forms. You're flat. I don't see and pay as much attention to you. You're a bit smaller. Magpie, you get a voice from now on. But you know what? I'm willing to bet. Before you know it, the other two ladies are gonna wanna. Oh, you feel left out as well. You're even smaller, and so then I'm paying less attention to you. Girls, I'm sorry. I've been ignorant. We all get a voice here, okay? We all do. I'll check in with you. Can we agree to that? Is that cool? Sammy the seahorse, that better not be you I hear right now. Oh, I want to be heard too. Please, don't ignore me. Look, you already got color. The other two are just in good old fashioned monochrome. And you're up top, come on, really? All right, fine, I guess I could allow you to squeak in a few words here or there as well. Ah, oh, fuck. I have had this bag for going on 10 years now. The bottom is starting to tear apart. It's time to move on. But I really like the shape and size of it. So I'm gonna see if I can recreate it. But step one here is to take some measurements. From here, I just now go ahead and transfer these measurements into a pattern. And the good thing is that all the pattern pieces that I have to create are rectangles. So no crazy curves or anything like that that needs sewing. And once I finished drawing out all the pieces, I labeled them and then cut them out. I picked up this denim at my local thrift store. And although I do not want a denim bag, I thought it would be a good fabric to use as a tester. I am committing a bit of a sin here because I am going the wrong direction. The grain of the fabric runs this way, so ideally this piece should be running this way. But again, this is a test piece. Quick definition, grain is usually the direction of the fabric that has the least amount of stretch. Now for the remaining pieces of the pattern, I need two of everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and double up my fabric. And as per usual, pin down the pattern pieces and trim them out. First order of business is finishing the top raw edge uh, in the opening of the thing that I'm making. And what we have here is my interlocking machine. And basically what it does is it puts a nice stitch around the outside so that the fabric doesn't fray. Let's go ahead and do that on the other side. And then I do the same thing on the top side of the side panels as well. I added exactly one inch along the top for this top lip here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that down. 
I repeated the process on the large body panel and then stitched down the freshly pressed edges. This next part has me a little bit scared and nervous because I find out if my maths was correct. Now from here, this next part has to wrap around and then I walk it up. Here we go. Let's see. Is this the right size? Oh! <laughs> Look at that! Look at that! A little messy there. Perfect! This is exciting stuff! Woo! And away we sew. The bottom corners presented the biggest challenge. There was a lot of ums and ahs and hmm. But eventually, figured it out and I got it done. Let's run this final stitch along here. You know what, that's pretty damn decent. But here's my mistake. I should have sewn it the other way so I can get the piping on the outside. So I had to undo the last stitch, repin, re-sew, and then voila. Very much taking shape. I'm going to pre-press the, the piping on the outside so that it becomes a bit easier to stitch on. And so the way I'm going to do that is first by folding it in half. And then I'm going to open that up and then fold each side in half and just press that. Woo, that's hot. Jeez. And then finally fold it closed again and press it one more time to make sure everything is properly in place. Next, I pinned that piping onto the actual body of the bag and sewed it down. Let's double check. Oh boy, we got a problem. It's not even underneath, okay. Go ahead and open that seam up. That was not working so well. I had to take a little time to rethink how I was gonna do it. What I'm going to do instead is what I did with the placket of this very shirt that I'm wearing in the last video. So I'm gonna go ahead, open up the, the, the piping and then I'm going to run a stitch on the, just on the inside of this fold here. Okay, so now that is on there. I go ahead and I pull this around and I push it down like that. That is getting chunky at the top there. Ooh, boy. All right, slow and steady wins this race. Make sure the ridges are lining up. Yep. Let's actually check the other side. Woo! Yeah! It's working! Okay, now this is where things get a little bit interesting. Working my way around the corner. So just like earlier, again, a lot of ums and ahs and hmm. Okay. Managed to figure it out, got it done. Finish up the end of the seam here. The fateful inspection time. Let's check out that seam. All right, let's see here. Yeah, look at that, that's all right. It sits okay. I repeated the process on the other side and got the piping attached and yes, I do like to work barefoot sometimes. The final thing is the straps. Now I'm once again going to do this exactly the same way that I did the piping along the edge. So first folding it in half, opening that up, folding it in, and ironing down the inside piece. And then repeat that step on the other side. And then, look at that. 
Make sure the edges line up really nicely. Doing a seam along the edge here of the handles, straps. Yeah, straps, not handles. Uh, oh boy, looks like my bobbin's empty. Oh jeez. Okay, there's that old chestnut of a problem. Uh, and onwards. The last step is to now attach the straps onto the bag. Okay, there we go. That's one side of the strap on. Repeat that three more times, which I did, and the bag was done. Manny, Mandy, Magpie, the twins, Sammy the seahorse. I gotta say, it's a bit of work addressing all of you. Anyways, I did it. I made, remade that bag actually, and quite chuffed if I do say so myself. Let me just go ahead and pack up here. Grab a few of these books. Oh, Rachel, pleasure to see you again. Hold stuff. Look at that. Pretty decent. Easy access. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right. Enough. Enough tomfoolery. Uh, really am pleased with this, though. What I do like about this project is that I managed to figure out the pattern all on my own. I also think that my seams are starting to get a little better and they're starting to get straighter, more professional. In the more difficult areas, I still do need a bit more practice. And there was one area where there was a bit of pinching. I do need to figure out how to sew the corners a little better. But overall, big ol' thumbs up to myself. Well done, me.